So these notes are integrated to, this is the um, 4.6 math analysis notes for tangent and cotangent. Okay, so this is the sort of notes that I'm gonna be filling out. Now, before I start anything, let's just kind of take a look and see what a tangent graph looks like, okay? So I'm gonna put in tangent, y is equal to tangent x, and there you see the tangent. Okay, and you see that um, we have a whole bunch of these, almost looks like an X cubed graph. For those of us who don't know what an X cubed graph looks like, this is what an X cubed graph looks like. So it's kind of similar, except for we have many of them and these X cubes keep going out forever and ever as they go up and down, where these ones are gonna end up had a, having an asymptote. And so where are those asymptotes? Well, those asymptotes are going to be, because remember, tangent is sine over cosine. So that's gonna be where my cosine is equal to zero. So my cosine is equal to zero at negative pi halves, pi halves, three pi halves, and so forth. That's where I'm gonna have asymptotes, okay? So let me put in um, x equal a negative pi halves. And let me make it dashed. And x is equal to a pi halves. And let me make it the same color and dashed. So this is one cycle of a tangent. So here is my y-axis. You can see that it goes from negative pi halves to pi halves, or from pi halves to three pi halves, and so forth. Now, I'm going to focus us on negative pi um, halves to positive pi halves. And this is what we're going to be graphing. You'll notice that it's starting below the x-axis to here, and then it's going above the x-axis, okay? Now, my cotangent graph, uh, my cotangent graph is going to look like the following. This is my cotangent graph, okay? My cotangent graph, you see it kind of looks like my x my um, tangent graph, but it is almost like it's it's a flip of it. So if I think of a negative x cubed, you can kind of see it kind of has that same type of a feel to it. Okay. Now, this one is going to be, let me get rid of these right now. This one is going to be going through um, and having issues where my sign is zero because cotangent is cosine over sine. So if I do my sine x, you see that sine is zero at negative pi halves, at zero at pi at, sorry, negative pi, I apologize, at zero at pi at two pi, okay? So that's where I'm gonna have asymptotes. I'm gonna have asymptotes at x equals zero. And I'm gonna have an asymptote at x equal pi. And so forth. So here you can see one cycle of my cotangent. So if I just focus from zero to pi, I'm sorry, from zero to pi, this is going to be one period, okay? So the distance from here to here is pi. Same with from negative pi halves to pi halves for my tangent. Let me get my tangent back in here. So y equal tangent x. And again, let me focus from negative pi halves um, to positive pi halves. Okay, and their asymptotes are going to be going x is equal to negative pi halves um, to x is equal to positive pi halves. Okay. 
Okay. So you can see the two of them. So here you see in green is your tangent graph going from negative pi halves to pi halves. Here is, let me make this actually orange so it looks different color. Okay. So the orange one is your cotangent graph going from zero to pi. So you see the symmetry here. One is kind of a flipped version of the other one. So let's take a look now at this paper. And let's kind of pay attention to um, where the asymptotes are, what graphs I'm going to be, what points I'm going to be graphing. So tangent, tangent um, is equal to sine over cosine. Okay, now my concern is my cosine being on bottom, my x. Because if my cosine is zero, then my tangent is going to be undefined, okay? Because I'm going to have zero in the denominator. So where is my cosine zero? So as I'm going around the unit circle, this is one comma zero. This is zero comma one. Negative one comma zero. Zero comma negative one. And my tangent is zero where, I'm sorry, my tangent is undefined where my cosine is zero. My cosine is my x, so here and here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to go from asymptote to asymptote. So when I'm going to be talking about this, I want us to understand that tangent is positive in this quadrant and this quadrant, quadrant one and quadrant three. And tangent is negative in quadrant two and quadrant four. Now, when I had my tangent graph, let me get this back up for you. You see my tangent is starting below negative and ending above. And I have it centered on my y-axis going from negative pi half to pi half. So when I'm looking at the unit circle, I'm actually going to start down here at negative pi half. And then I'm going to be traveling around here until I get up here to positive pi half. Okay. Now, as I'm doing that, you'll notice I'll go through these negative values for tangent, then these positive values for tangent. Okay. Now, what are some nice values for tangent? Well, tangent has some nice values, okay? Um, let me just state this. This is gonna be undefined up here, and it's gonna be undefined here. So it's gonna be undefined at negative pi halves, and it's gonna be undefined up here at pi halves. Now, when I'm going around this unit circle, um, I am going to have a nice tangent value here at negative pi force because this is a root two halves comma negative root two halves, which means my tangent here is going to be negative one, which means up here at my pi force, which is gonna be a root two halves comma root two halves, my tangent here is going to be a positive one. Because again, my tangent is equal to my y over x. Okay. Now, here at zero, um, I'm going to have zero over one, which is zero. So my tangent here. is zero. So what's going to be happening as I'm traveling from this asymptote to this asymptote up here, from negative pi halves to positive pi halves, I'm going through these negative values, zero, positive values, up to undefined again. The distance from here to here is pi, half of our circle. 
So that's why a normal cycle of tangent is pi. Okay, so let me come down here and let me just kind of re-emphasize some of these. So what's going to be happening for tangent? Okay, this is focused on tangent. Okay, um, here, this is going to be at negative pi halves. Let me just kind of um, get a smaller font. Here, I think of it as undefined here at negative pi halves. Then here, it's going to be negative 1 at negative pi force. And okay, let me just write it like this. Um, at, so at negative pi force. Here, it's going to be 0 at 0. Here, it's going to be 1 at pi force. And up here, it's going to be undefined at pi half. So I am going to be starting here, traveling around here to here. That is the direction that I'm going to be going. And as I'm traveling, what's going to be happening, I'm going to be starting at negative pi half at an asymptote. When I get to negative pi force, I'm at negative one. Okay, so once I get here, I'm at negative one. As I continue going at zero, I'm at zero. As I continue going at pi force, I'm at one. And as I continue going up to here at pi halves, I have an asymptote. So when I'm graphing these, I like to graph from asymptote to asymptote. So that means from, from basically negative pi half to positive pi half. And as I'm going, again, it's going to be basically undefined, negative 1, 0, 1, undefined, as I'm traveling around the unit circle. Okay, so as I'm traveling around this unit circle, undefined, negative 1, 0, 1, undefined. Now, here is the equation of a tangent, y is equal to a, which is your amplitude, tangent b, B being how many cycles within pi distance this time. X minus H, this would be your phase shift, plus K is your vertical shift. So your period is going to be pi divided by B. Okay, so let's graph these. So over here, when I'm going to be graphing regular tangent, okay, so again, when I'm doing this, I'm personally thinking the following, okay? As I'm going around the unit circle, I'm concerned where where my, because it's y over x, I'm concerned about where x is 0. That's what I'm concerned with. x equals 0. That's where I'm concerned. And x is equal to 0 up here, and x is equal to 0 here. So at negative pi halves, then I'm going to travel here. This is going to be a negative 1. I'm going to travel here. This is 0. I'm going to travel here. This is 1. And then, neg uh, sorry, positive pi half. And here, this is undefined. Here, this is undefined. Okay, so that's what I'm going to graph. So I am going to um, have my x, my y, axis here in the center. Um, I am going to be going up to 1, down to negative 1. I'm going to have five marks because I have five points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when I say five points, I don't necessarily mean five points. Asymptote, point, 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 asymptote. That's what's going to be happening here. Okay, 
So I'm going to have five tick marks. So I'm going to have one, two, in this case, my X, my Y axis is one of them, three, four, five. And I'm going to be going from negative pi halves to positive pi halves. I need to see that value where my asymptotes are. And I am going to have an asymptote here. And I'm going to have an asymptote here. And let me just write those equations. So this is x is equal to negative pi halves. This is x is equal to positive pi halves. And then as I'm going around the unit circle, I'm going to hit negative 1, 0, 1 asymptote. So negative 1, 0, 1 asymptote. And there's my tangent. Now, on the next one, I do have a period adjustment on it, but I'm going to graph it similar, similar way. So for this, this is really a one-fourth in front of my x, which means in pi distance, for example, in pi distance, I'm, I'm not going from zero to pi, but in pi distance, I've only gone one-fourth of my graph. Okay, I've only done one-fourth. So... I need to go four more sections, which means this is going to end up being a four pi, okay? But even without that, how I'm going to graph this is this is how I think about it. I know that my tangent, okay, again, where does my x equal zero? That's where I'm concerned. It's here and here. So again, I'm going from negative pi half, one, zero, sorry, negative one, zero, one, up to positive I have. That's where my asymptotes usually are. So what I do is I take whatever my B times X minus H, which in this case is X over four, and I am going to set it equal to my asymptotes that should be there. And it should be here at a negative pi halves and at a positive pi half. Now let me solve for x. So on the first one, when I multiply by four, I get a negative four pi halves or negative two pi. That's gonna be one asymptote. For the other one, I am going to times both sides by four. So I get x is equal to four pi halves or two pi. So I'm going to go from negative two pi to two pi. That's where my asymptotes are going to be. Okay. So when I'm drawing this out, um, again, I'm going to go from negative two pi to two pi. So I'm going to have one, two, negative two pi, one, two, positive two pi, and my zeros in the center. And I'm going to go up one. I'm going to go down negative one. And I have an asymptote here at x equal negative two pi and here at x equal positive two pi. And then again, as I'm going around the circle, I'm starting here at my asymptote, I'm going to hit negative one, zero, one. Okay, so I'm going to hit negative one, zero, one. And there's my graph. When I'm looking at the next one, I have a vertical shift. Okay, so that's going to adjust where my zero is to be shifted up to one, height of one. I have an amplitude, which means that instead of going up one, down one, I'm going to be going up two from here and down two from this one. Three is my B. So I have three cycles within pi. So pi thirds is going to be my period. And then this is my phase shift. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my b times x minus h 
And again, for this, for a tangent, okay, I'm starting at negative pi halves, okay, and then I'm going to hit a negative one, a zero, a positive one, and I'm up here at pi halves. So those are going to be my asymptotes. So I am going to take three times x minus pi and set it equal to a negative pi half. And then I'm going to take three times x minus pi and set it equal to a positive pi half. Those are where my asymptotes get, get moved to. So I am going to um, times this both, uh, sorry, divide both sides by three. So that means this is going to be a negative pi six. I'm going to add pi on, which is a 6 over 6. So I'm going to end up at a 5 pi 6 for one of my asymptotes. For my other one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to divide by 3, so I get a positive pi 6. I'm going to add pi or 6 over 6, so I get a 7 pi 6. So that's where my asymptotes are going to be. So um, let me draw this. Um, I'm going to be starting up at 1. Um, I'm going to be starting up at 1. I'm going to go 2 above. So I'm going to be up at 3. I'm going to go 2 below. So I'm going to be down at negative 1. Um, I'm going to start at 5 pi 6. That's my first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 7 pi 6. These are going to be my asymptotes. So I'm going to have an asymptote here and here. And then as I'm going around this, I'm going to be going this direction. So I'm going to be going negative 1 negative one, zero, one. That's how I'm going to be going. So uh, when I say negative one, I'm going to be at my low. When I say zero, I'm going to be at my middle. And when I say one, I'm going to be at my high. So I'm going to be up at three. My lowest one's going to be at negative one. My zero is really a one and then three. And that's my graph. Now, cotangent is going to be on the x-axis in the sense of going from 0 to pi. So let's take a look at that. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So I care where my sine or my y is 0. So when my sine is equal to 0, my cotangent is going to be undefined. And that's going to be at 0 and pi. OK? So as I'm going around the unit circle, this point here is 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0. And down here is 0, comma, negative 1. Now, my um, sine, or my y, so remember cotangent, is x over y. And my y is equal to 0 at 0 and pi. So right here. Uh, my cotan, so right here, this is going to be undefined because, again, my um, y is 0 here and here. Um, then I'm going to be hitting this point at pi force, which is root 2 halves, comma, root 2 halves, which means the tangent there, or cotangent there, is going to be one up here at pi half, um, which is zero comma one, my cotangent is going to be 
0 over 1, which is 0. Over here at 3 pi force, um, the coordinates of that, let me just write it here, is going to be a negative root 2 half. I'll write it in black here. It is going to be a negative root 2 halves comma root 2 halves. And again, this is at 3 pi fourth. And my cotangent here is going to be a negative 1. And then here, this is going to be undefined again. Now, again, cotangent, just like tangent, has a normal cycle or period of pi. OK, so when I'm talking about this one, I'm going to be starting at 0, which is undefined. I'm going to be hitting here, which is pi force, and that's going to be a 1. I'm going to be hitting this, which is pi halves, which is a 0. I'm going to be coming here, which is a 3 pi force, which is negative 1. And then I'm coming here to, so again, this is at 0. And this is undefined at pi. And that's what we're going to graph. So as I'm coming around this, I'm starting here, going to hit 1, 0 negative one, undefined. So I'm going to have asymptote, then one, then zero, then negative one, then asymptote. And again, I am going to graph from asymptote to asymptote. which means I'm going to go from 0 to pi. And as I'm traveling, I'm going to be undefined at 0. I'm going to be at 1. I'm going to be at 0. I'm going to be at negative 1. And I'm going to be undefined. And that is why when we're looking at our cotangent, I am starting high and my positive, zero, negative. Because I'm over here, positive, zero, negative. So again, this is my positive. This is also positive. This is negative. This is also negative. But I am focusing from here to here for my cotangent. And for my tangent, I am focusing here to here in these two quadrants. OK. OK. Um, so when I am graphing these, OK? Let me go to my cotangent. Again, I'm just going to sketch. This is x over y. And so what I'm really going is, where is y 0? And y is 0 here. This is going to be undefined. 1, 0, negative 1, undefined. Okay, that's where I'm going to be traveling. So let me get my graph. So my first tick mark is actually going to be the y-axis, second, third, fourth, fifth. I'm going to stop at pi. I am going to have an asymptote here at x equals 0 and here at x equal pi, so this is x equal 0, and this one's x equal pi. 
And then again, as I'm going around, I'm going to hit one, zero, negative one, zero. Okay, so let me actually, I did put my marks here, one, negative one. So I'm going to start at one, zero, negative one. And that's my graph. On the next one, I have a negative um, amplitude, which means it's actually going to flip this. So it's going to look more like a tangent, okay, where it's going to start below and then end above, okay? So for this one, again, just to focus myself, I'm it's x over y, and so I want to know where's y zero. So y zero here, undefined, one, zero, negative one, undefined. So when I'm trying to figure out where my asymptotes are, I'm going to take two x, I'm going to set equal to zero, which means x is zero. I am going to take two x, set it equal to pi, which means x is equal to pi have, and this is what I'm going to graph. Okay, so I am going to, um, I don't have any vertical shift, and my first mark is going to be my y-axis, so one, two, three, four, five, so that's going to be pi halves. I am going to have an asymptote here. Sorry, just trying to get my color here. Okay. Okay, so I am going to be having an asymptote here. What's not here, sorry. On my y-axis, I apologize. I lost my train of thought when I was trying to do that. So I'm gonna have it here on my x my y-axis at x equals zero. And I'm gonna have it here at x equal pi half. And it is a negative, okay, which means that I'm going to be starting, instead of going one, zero, negative one, I'm going to do the opposite, okay? Now, when I say that, what I mean is um, what I mean is that um, so I'm going to be starting three above and three below. Okay, I don't have a vertical shift. Now, again, as I was saying, because of that negative three, what's happening is I'm going to be starting um, at instead negative three, then my zero, then three as I'm going. So I'm going to be flipping it. So I'm going to start at my negative three, then my zero, then my three which is gonna be like a, a tangent graph as opposed to a cotangent graph. And for our last one, um, so for this one, okay, I'm gonna take this um, two times x plus pi. And again, remember when I'm doing this and going around a unit circle and I'm thinking of x over y, I'm thinking about undefined one, zero, negative one, undefined. That's what I'm thinking. So I am going to take the two times x plus pi that is equal to zero, and the two times x plus pi and set it equal to um, pi. So when I divide by two, I get x plus pi equals zero. 
and then I subtract and I have my first asymptote at negative pi. My second one, I'm going to have um, x plus pi is equal to pi halves. I'm going to minus uh, pi, and I get a negative pi half. So I'm going to be starting at negative pi, ending at negative pi halves. Okay. And let me shift it over. Okay. So I am going to be starting at 2, going 4 above, which is 6, going 4 below, which is negative 2. And I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 marks. Uh, my first one is negative pi. My last one is negative pi halves. That's where I'm going to have my asymptotes. So I'm going to have an asymptote here at x equal negative pi and an asymptote here at x equal negative pi half. So I have it at negative pi and negative pi half. Now for this, I am going to be starting um, going one, zero, negative one. Now, in this case, when I say one, I'm talking about my high, which is six. My zero is my two, and my negative two is my negative one. So I'm going to be starting up at six, heading down to two, and then the next one's going to be at negative two. And there's my graph. Good luck graphing your your tangents and your cotangents today.